Welcome to the Inspire and Learn series. We are the Multihull Group, a multi-award winning dealership in Australia, specialising in catamarans. Join us as our expert team teach you all about anchoring, docking, rigging, sail trim, maintenance, and so much more, so you can build confidence in your catamaran handling ability. We're on a Lagoon 42, and today we're going to go out and we're gonna look at some anchoring. Now, a catamaran, specifically a Lagoon, is um, the perfect vessel to get the absolute best spot in the anchorage. With a draft of uh, just over 1.2 meters, this really allows us to go quite shallow. There are five main components and things to consider when we're anchoring a catamaran. Number one being the anchor, it's very important. Number two, the wind direction, any tidal flow that might affect the boat. And then we're gonna look at dropping the anchor, how much chain to pay out, and a way to effectively set your anchor to ensure that it doesn't drag if the wind does get up and that you have a safe anchorage while you're there. We're also gonna look at attaching the bridle. This creates an artificial bow, spreading the weight between the hulls and moves the center of effort forward to reduce the swinging when you're on the anchorage. Another thing we're gonna look at is the communication between the person on the bow dropping the anchor and the driver at the helm station. And then we're also gonna talk about a little bit of the maneuvering and how you approach an anchorage spot. So the standard setup in the mooring kit on a lagoon is your remote, your gypsy or windlass, and then your chain. You've got an anchor on that, and then you also have the bridle. So what I'm holding here is the remote for the anchor winch. So it's very simple. You have an up and a down button here. It's connected to a relay box in here, which controls this electric winch. So there are probably three main things that you need to make sure. You need to make sure you've got good access to the remote. So the remote, as we mentioned, is stored in this hatch. This needs to be out and ready to go just on the deck like it is now. The other thing, the bridle and any gear that we have on the bow needs to not obstruct the anchor. So we can remove that and make sure it's well clear of the chain so that when the anchor goes and when the chain goes, there's nothing getting caught. Now the last thing we need to do is to prime the anchor. So if I drop the anchor in this position, it will not fall down. So what we need to do is just lower it a little bit, let a tiny bit of chain out, and then just help the anchor over the very edge. Now you can see the chain is lifted there at the bow, the anchor is hanging over the edge. As soon as I press down on the remote, the anchor will fall. The conditions today are perfect for anchoring. We've got a very light northerly wind. It is due to swing around a bit, so that's actually quite a good demonstration of what can happen on an anchorage anyway. But what we're gonna be doing is making sure that the anchor is set. So if we do get 20 knots of wind, 25 knots of wind come in this afternoon, we know and we're confident that the boat is gonna be safe in all weather situations. So there are a number of factors which um, affect the amount of chain or warp that we're gonna let out when we're anchoring. In benign light wind conditions like we're in today, we're gonna to let out about three to four times the depth of the water in chain. So if we're in three meters of water, we're gonna be letting out nine to 12 meters. And I'm fairly confident that with the bridle set properly, that would hold us fine for the day. If we're anchoring in stronger wind or we're expecting wind to come in later on in the day or during the night, we'd be letting out a bit more chain. Really, it's enough to make you confident that the anchor's gonna hold. So if we're expecting 20 knots of wind, I'd be letting out five, six, maybe even seven times the depth. The more chain you've got out, as long as the anchor is set properly at the start, you can have confidence that the anchor will hold. So often people ask us, if I don't have a chain counter at the helm station, how do I know how much chain I've let out or I'm letting out? And it's um, really quite simple. We just have to work out the speed at which we drop. So we know on, on these boats, it's a quick windlass is the brand. We know that we drop about one meter every two seconds. So if we need to drop 15 meters of chain, we're simply dropping the chain for approximately 30 seconds and that gives us our 15 meters. Okay, so now we've sorted out the foredeck, we know that's all ready to go. As we're coming into the anchorage, we need to have someone on the bow. So keep a lookout for obstacles, keep a lookout for other boats that might be moving around that the skipper doesn't have as good a visibility of. That person on the bow will also be in charge of the anchor when it comes to dropping. So it's really important that there is a clear communication. And on this boat, we're only maybe 25 feet apart, so we can very easily talk to each other. If you are short-handed sailing one of these uh, catamarans, it is possible to have a uh, remote control for the chain counter. So what we would do, we would prime the anchor on the bow, just like we did, 
and then we'd come back here and we'd have a display here with the up down controls and a chain counter so that we know how much chain we're letting out if you're on your own that's the best way to be doing it, it gives you full control from here so we're just approaching the anchorage now I've had a look at the chart so I know roughly the, the outlying shape of the bay that we're heading into. I've had a look at the depth contours so I know where are the good flat areas to anchor and where are the not so good areas to anchor. If you're heading into a shallow area, keep a look out for shallow patches that aren't necessarily charted. When we get in, I'm going to be looking for my chosen depth. So let's say I'm going to anchor in four meters of water. I've put a waypoint on the chart where is my ideal spot to be dropping the anchor and I know that. So that as I maneuver in, I can let the person on the bow know how close I am to the to dropping the anchor. As we get to that spot, I'm going to stop the boat and I'll bring the boat to a complete stop. It's really important that I'm facing head to wind at this stage, so that as we're dropping the anchor, the boat is stationary, facing head to wind. I'll signal to the person on the bow to drop the anchor. At the moment that I think the anchor has touched the bottom, I'm going to start moving the boat backwards. So this, what this does is it l drops the anchor on and then lays out the chain in a nice orderly fashion. What you want to avoid is dropping the chain in a big pile because it can become tangled around itself and the anchor won't hold effectively. Now there are a couple of ways that I know that the anchor has touched the bottom. Number one, I know the depth and I know how fast the anchor windlass moves. Number two is you can hear it. So when the anchor is hanging, the chain is tight across the deck and we'll demonstrate this soon. When the anchor has touched the bottom, you can see visibly in the chain that's horizontal across the deck, it sags because there isn't the 25 kilograms of weight hanging off the chain. So we've just finished dropping the chain. We dropped the anchor in about four meters of water, like I said. So we put out about 12 meters of chain before the bridle goes on. I'll just put the boat in reverse and I'll give it a bit of power in reverse and what that'll do that'll put quite a lot of pressure on the anchor and the chain and if the anchor is not set properly we will drag the anchor if it is set properly you'll see the anchor go anchor chain go tight there'll be quite a shallow angle on it you'll see it going into the water and then as soon as I ease off the throttles in reverse, the boat will bounce forward again. And that's typical of a perfectly set anchor. At that point, you can then attach your bridle and pay out the rest of the chain. So there are some really clever tricks to make sure that you are anchored safely and that your anchor isn't dragging. One of them is to uh, take a transit on the land or anything fixed for that matter. So where we are now, we're in quite a nice little bay. There are some poles, some posts I can see. Line that up with something behind it and just look at it for a minute. If that alignment changes, then it means that the boat is, is moving and um, you might want to look at re resetting your anchor. Very important that you don't choose a moving object for your transit, like a sheep or a cow or a um, kangaroo. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach the bridle and this creates a big triangle in front of the boat, moving the center of effort forward. So when it would otherwise be here, it moves it out five or six meters and this reduces the swinging because it spreads the load between each bow. So the bridle is a very simple setup. Big thick line which goes to each bow and it's got this hook on it. Now this hook doesn't go through the links in the chain, it goes over a complete link with this sprung pin here holding it in place. Now I'll demonstrate putting that on now. So with all the bridle hanging over the front of the boat apart from the hook, I then put the hook over the complete link in the chain like this. Now it's not designed to go through the links in the chain because otherwise it will get jammed. Once this is in position and the pin, the sprung pin has snapped back into place, we're all good to drop another five or six meters and then the weight of the boat will be taken by the bridle instead of the chain. So what we can see, we can see the bridle in the water now, going out at a really nice angle and the chain which is here actually goes down vertically and hangs in a big loop to the bridle. That means all the weight of the boat is now on the bridle. The chain is at rest, and most importantly, there is no strain on the electric windlass. We've looked at dropping the anchor and setting it. The next thing we need to look at is lifting it effectively and safely, not putting any undue stress on the equipment that we've got on the boat. So before we even think about lifting it, we need to make sure that the engines are running. This will activate the winch and provide us power from the batteries. 
So when both crew members are in position, the captain is at the helm with the engines running ready to drive the boat and the crew member is here with the remote. The captain will signal to the crew member to start lifting the anchor. So the first thing we'll be doing is retrieving the bridle, much like we did when we were dropping the anchor. So we will lift the anchor up. So once the hook on the bridle comes to this stage, I then unattach it and make sure that the bridle is well clear of the chain. So I'm going to pull in all the slack so that we've got nothing hanging in the water and make sure that the chain and the anchor can come up freely. I'll then signal to the captain that we're good to go, the bridle is off and he'll edge forward and we will pick up the rest of the chain. It's very important at this stage that with the chain coming up we're not pulling the boat forward with the electric winch. So there has to be very clear communication between the crew member and the captain for edging the boat forward, not too far forward because you'll drive over the chain, but just enough so that we can lift the chain with as, as little weight on the electric windlass as possible. So this is gonna be a really important job for the crew member. So the crew member has to let the captain know where the chain is. So if, the, if we're driving too far over it, he has to let the captain know. So everyone has their own system of communicating between this point and the helm station. I tend to use my arm to signal like this where the anchor chain is so that the captain knows how he needs to maneuver the vessel on the engines to pick up the anchor and the chain with minimal stress on the winch. So guys, thanks for joining us on this uh, outing where we looked at anchoring and maneuvering the boat to an anchorage. We do hope you enjoy our Inspire and Learn series and it would be great if you did want to learn more and pick up more tips and tricks on operating your catamaran or lagoon. Do give us a, uh, a follow on YouTube, subscribe and you can get updates to, uh, to everything we do. Join us next time when Joe shows us how to manoeuvre in a marina and safely park your catamaran. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video.